my king take my lips and let them be filled with messages from thee filled with messages from thee take my will and make it thine it shall be no longer mine take my heart it is your own it shall be thy royal throne it shall be thy royal throne
Good morning. Welcome to Worship at Leap of Faith Church. I'm Virgie Holbrook. I'm the pastor of the church. Thank you for being here with me this Sunday morning. I remind you of the comment column over here that's there for you to use, the giving button at the top, the middle part for you to list your name and the names of those worshiping with you, and all the way down at the bottom, the form to fill out if you're not receiving our newsletter and would like to, just leave your email address there, and I'll be happy to see that newsletter sent to you every Thursday evening. You also can use the form down there to, uh, to make confidential prayer requests. I'm the only one who sees it, and I would be happy to add whatever your uh, joy or concern is to my own personal prayer list. So, uh, giving button... Register your attendance here in the in the middle part and down at the bottom. Subscribe to the newsletter and use that for prayer prayer concerns as well. In addition to that giving button, you know you can give to support ministry here at Leap of Faith in other ways as well. We have that text to give option. The number is 903-225-8774. Very easy to use. There's a PayPal button on our newsletter. If you're already receiving that, you can just click that button and um, and do as it as it advises you, or you can always write a check to Leap of Faith Church or LOFC. Send it to 5615 North Farm to Market 1417 Sherman, Texas 75092. Uh, we are so grateful for your support of ministry here at Leap of Faith Church. Announcements. We are getting closer and closer to Heyday Vacation Bible School. If you're in the Texoma area and would like to participate, that will be June 24th, 25th, and 26th. That's a Friday night, 4 to 9, a Saturday night, 4 to 9, and Sunday morning, 11 o'clock in the sanctuaries. Everybody can participate. It's not for children only. All ages are welcome. Uh, we'll be serving supper, and we'll be serving up a lot of fun, too. So I hope that if you're in the area, you'll just come on ahead to Heyday Vacation Bible School. And, and big, news, uh, big news on another front as well, we are starting up Sunday School for all ages, Sunday, July 3rd, um, throughout the summer before a grand opening right when school starts back in, in the end of August. But we will be having Sunday School for All Ages once again here beginning July 3rd. Again, if you're in the area, uh, come, and, come and check it out. Details will be in our newsletter, and I'll be telling you more in the weeks to come. For updated information about the church, mylofc.org and the Leap of, Faith, uh, Leap of Faith Church Facebook page. All right. Today is Pentecost. Today is Pentecost. It's one of my favorite days in the whole church year. It's the day that the church was born. It's the day that the gift of the Holy Spirit was given. We'll be talking more about God's gifts this morning, so you can stay tuned for that. But first, worship music from the Leap of Faith Band. Oh 
I've tasted and seen the sweetest of loves where my heart becomes free my shame is of Faith is an independent church, not connected with any local church, with any other denomination. From our very earliest days, we adopted the historic confession of the Christian faith, the Apostles' Creed, as our own confession of faith. I invite you to join in with me now. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's mercy, I invite you to join me now as we confess our sin. God, though we know there's never a moment in our lives when we don't need you standing with us, we know, too, that it's all too easy to forget about you, to set you aside. We put off prayers, we forego worship, we get busy with things that don't really matter. Forgive us, God, and remind us gently or vigorously that you require first place in our lives. God, hear our prayer, and hear too our silent prayers of confession. Will you hear the good news? In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven, and so am I. Amen. Joys and concerns this morning. I ask your prayers every Sunday. I ask your prayers for those who lead our world, those who lead our country, those who lead the states that we live in, those who lead our communities. I ask you to pray for all these leaders that they might take meaningful action in dealing with all the difficult, painful, tragic situations all around the world, most especially what's, uh, most, most especially all that's happening in Ukraine, the people of that country, the people of Russia, and all who are affected by, by that situation. Please pray for everyone who has health-related difficulties, especially Tony, Marilyn, Dean, and Dina, Rita's dad, Dax, Sue, Johnny, Carol, Robin, Ari, Anthony, Betty Ann, Fidel, Miriam, the Van Hoosiers, Mary, Francesca, Steve, Billy, Jewel, Pat, Dassey, and Laurie. Please pray faithfully for all who serve in the military of our country, especially Tyler, Jessica, Jordan, Devin, and Clayton. And, you know, if you have a family member or a friend who is in military service here in our country, uh, you're welcome to leave their name in the, in the column there or to, or to text that name to me. I would be so happy to add their names to, to this prayer list. We have... 
three birthdays here at Leap of Faith this week. June 8th, Dana Condren and Megan Irby both are celebrating. On June 10th, Gina Monson is celebrating. Please wish them a happy birthday. If you know any of these three, give them a call or put a card in the mail or post something on Facebook, but let them know how special they are. Other joys as well, uh, progress on our on our SPJ house in Morez, it's, it's coming right along uh, as our preparations for Vacation Bible School, but they'll be even better if you will pray them along the way. I ask your prayers today as always for the Leap of Faith Band, for Brad Nixon, for Summer Holbrook, who produced this worship service. And you know, of course, if you have joys or if you have concerns to share, right over here in the comment column, if there's something that you can share publicly, just list them in the comment column. And if they're more of a, of a private kind of nature, all the way down the bottom, that form there for, for more personal prayers. And now let's pray. Our God, if we are tired, we ask you to fill us with your spirit. And if we're worried, we ask you to fill us with your spirit. And if we're afraid, heart sick, hurting, God, lift our spirits with your own spirit. God, if life is sort of humdrum, fill us with your spirit. If we are content with too little, fill us with your spirit. If we're comfortable with mediocrity, with good enough, send us your spirit, God. And give us dreams and visions that point us in the direction you intend for us to follow. God, when you seem so far from us, when we pray and don't seem to get answers, when we don't know what, what we don't know you like, we'd like to know you, God, send us your own spirit. Fill our own hearts, our own minds, our own bodies. Fill them right up with your spirit, God. We are praying today to be filled with your spirit. Send it like a gale force wind, like a raging wildfire. Fill us with your spirit. We don't understand how this works exactly. We aren't quite sure what we're asking of you. We don't know what the outcome will be, but we do know that your intention for us is that we open ourselves up to your spirit, that we welcome it in, that we allow it to guide us in all that we do. We've heard rumors about what happens, God, what others say happens when the Holy Spirit shows up. Speaking in tongues, dancing in the aisles, are these real things, God, brought about by your Spirit when it does arrive? If so, let it be. And if there is something different, something more that your Spirit brings about, then let that be too. As you sent your Spirit to the first who followed Jesus, send it now to us. We pledge to you that we are open to follow that spirit wherever it leads to go as it moves us into whatever likely or unlikely places it directs. Spirit of faith, come down. Reveal the things of God. We don't know exactly what we're asking, but we trust you, God, knowing that we're safe with you. And so we ask you to hear this prayer together with all the prayers of this church, the joys, the concerns, those spoken, those kept silent. And hear us now as we pray together in the way that Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Once again, it's Malachi. Today it's Malachi chapter 3, verses 6 through 12. And I'm reading this morning from the message. Here's how it goes. I am God. Yes, I am. I haven't changed. And because I haven't changed, you, the descendants of Jacob, haven't been destroyed. You have a long history of ignoring my commands. You haven't done a thing I've told you. Return to me so I can return to you, says God of the angel armies. You ask, but how? How do we return? And God says, begin by being honest. Do honest people rob God? But you rob me day after day. You ask, how? How have we robbed you? And God says, the tithe and the offering, that's how. And now you're under a curse, the whole lot of you, because you're robbing me. Bring your full tithe to the temple treasury so there will be ample provisions in my temple. Test me in this. Test me in this and see. See if I don't open up heaven itself to you and pour out blessings beyond your wildest dreams. 
For my part, I will defend you against marauders, protect your wheat fields and vegetable gardens against plunderers. This is the message of God of the Angel Armies. You'll be voted happiest nation. You'll experience what it's like to be a country of grace. God of the Angel Armies says so. I ask God to bless this reading of God's Word. Well, do you know these names? I'm just going to read you this list of names and think about if you can kind of identify who these people are. What about Oral Roberts? Oral Roberts, Robert Tilton, Joel Osteen, Kenneth Copeland, Joyce Meyer, Bruce Wilkinson. Any of those ring a bell? Do you know any of those names? Do you know what these folks, do you know what these people have in common? They've all preached a theology called the prosperity gospel. And do you know what that is? Do you know what the prosperity gospel is? It's a theology that advocates that financial blessing and physical well-being are sort of repayment from God for generous financial generous financial donations to the church. There's more to it than that, of course, but that's sort of the linchpin. In my opinion, there are all kinds of objections that can be raised about the prosperity gospel. There are all kinds of objections, but the one that hits home with me is the most is the notion that we who follow Christ should give in order to get. And two, inherent in the prosperity gospel is the flawed idea that we can manipulate God, buy God off, so to speak, get what we want by feeding God cash. Then too, we have to consider that, the, that what the prosperity gospel suggests is that God would reward our faith with cash money, sort of like the parent who pays for A's. All of these are just different takes on the same basic idea, of course. What I haven't mentioned until now is that it seems that frequently those who preach the prosperity gospel aren't waiting for God to provide the big returns. They are taking the money given by those they serve and using it to feather their own nests. I don't know about you. But I myself, I find this pretty distasteful. But the thing is, is that we have this sermon text today. We have this sermon text from Malachi. It's Malachi chapter 3, verse 6 through 12. You'll remember that I chose to preach from the whole book of Malachi throughout May in the first part of June for no better reason than, than that I wasn't familiar with this last book of the Old Testament, with any of the 12 last books of the Old Testament, with the exception, of course, of Jonah. These last 12 books of the Old Testament, they're called the Minor Prophets or the Latter Prophets. And I just, I just haven't ever ever had much reason to spend time with them. And so we've been working our way the, through, through the six units of Malachi, and now we come up to this one. Just consider again what it says. God, speaking through Malachi, says to the people, you all have a long history of ignoring my commands. You haven't done a thing I've told you. Return to me so I can return to you, says the God of the angel armies. At least that's the way that Eugene Peterson paraphrases the, word, the words of God in, in the message. And then the people ask, how? How are we to return to you? And God, speaking through Malachi, says, give me the full tithe and see what happens. I will throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you won't have enough room for it. Return to me. Return to me sounds at first reading like God is saying, come back to me. But that's not it. It's more like God is saying, give back to me that which you owe me. Give back to me that which you've stolen. Return it to me. And then God goes on to say, again, as paraphrased by Eugene Peterson, test me in this. You test me in this and see if I don't open up heaven itself to you and pour out blessings beyond your wildest dreams. For my part, I will defend you against marauders, protect your wheat fields and vegetable gardens against plunderers. You will be voted the happiest nation. You'll experience what it's like to be a country of grace. And this sounds a lot like the prosperity gospel, giving to God to get from God. But that isn't, in fact, the real issue. The real problem that God is addressing through Malachi is that the people have been living as though everything that they have belongs to them. They've forgotten that everything, that everything we have, everything, it all belongs to God who trusted us with the management of it, with the stewardship of it, of God's resources that God generously shared. 
And of course, that's a trap that we all fall into. We are prone to forgetting that no matter how much or how little we have in the way of material resources, every last penny, every last thing belongs to God in the first place. God has just generously entrusted us with it and hope that we'll use whatever we have, whether a lot or a little, for God's glory, to make the crooked way straight, to make the crooked way smooth, until at last Jesus returns once and for all, bringing in for all eternity the kingdom of God itself. But God doesn't want us to give to God because God needs whatever money or goods we've somehow managed to amass. God will, God will make a way one way or another with or without us. God doesn't want us to give to God to see whether God will come through for us, repay us big time. God wants us to return what God entrusts to us because the act of giving itself, it frees us, it blesses us. It gives us a glimpse of the coming kingdom as we live here and now, day to day. What God is telling the people, what God is telling us, you and me, is to live open-handedly rather than close-fistedly. God is telling the people, He's telling us, He's telling you and telling me, not so much that God is cursing us because of our stinginess, but that we curse ourselves by living this way. Because God created us to be those who give rather than those who grasp. What we return to God is meant to be a thank you gift, not a bribe. But you know that. I know you know that. I know you know that because of what this church has done, what you have done over the past three months. You have given an almost new 15-passenger van that, to a community that needs to get its kids to school every day in the hope that education will be the very thing that breaks them out of a pattern of generation after generation of living in poverty because of lack of knowledge, because of lack of training, because of lack of skills, because of lack of hope. Over the past few months, the past three months, you have fully funded a house for a family, a mom and a dad with three young boys, a house with an indoor bathroom, a shower, a flushing toilet, a kitchen with safe food storage, bedrooms furnished with comfortable beds, windows and doors that can be shut and locked, providing a measure of safety, of security for those who live within. That house you funded, it is more than a roof over their heads, so it is that too. That house, it supports the health and self-esteem that will enable its occupants to support themselves and contribute back to their community. And over the past three months, you have made a substantial contribution to providing food for families in that Juarez community who are food insecure. But the really helpful part of this food program, it goes beyond meals on the table. As volunteers deliver food each week, they go into homes, they assess needs, they make a plan to address those needs. Is someone in that house sick? Is someone in that house not doing so well in school? Is someone out of work? When problems are noticed early, they can be managed before they create obstacles that can really slow down or prevent altogether a family's progress toward independence. God might be seeming to say through Malachi that we should give in order to get keeping a careful balance sheet to make sure God is coming through for us, but that's not it, not at all. God is telling us that when we live as those we were created to be, generous and open-handed, and aware of all the goodness, all the gifts that God has already poured out into our lives, when we share out of delight in the goodness of God, our hearts will not be able to con contain the life-giving gratitude that we'll feel. But I'm preaching to the choir, aren't I? Because you, you already know that. You already know it. Amen. Want to join Leap of Faith Church? I would love to have you serving God alongside all of us here. We would love to welcome you into this community of faith. Give me a call, 903 821 for 505. Be happy to receive you. To participate more fully here at Leap of Faith in worship and in the life of the church, the giving button up top of that, of that comment column, text to give 903-225-8774, PayPal button on the newsletter, and of course you can always send a check 
5615 North Farm to Market, 1417 Sherman, Texas, 75092. Join us late. Leave your name in the giving column. If you need to receive the newsletter and it's not showing up in your email inbox on Thursday night, leave me your email address down there at that form at the bottom of the page. And if you have prayer concerns that you'd like to keep private, to keep confidential, use that form down there for that purpose too. Nobody sees it. May I be happy to keep your confidence. To find out more about the church, the Leap of Faith Church Facebook page or our website, mylofc.org. And now in closing. Hold tight to God's promise made on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit was given to the newborn church. You can find this promise in Acts 2, verses 17, 20, 21. It goes like this. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood for the coming of the, the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Go in peace, my friend. Go in peace. But first, stick around for music from the Leap of Faith Band. I hope to see you next Sunday.
accept this bread and wine. Take our hearts and make them thine. Take our work and our anxiety. Give us life and liberty. Change this bread into your body and this wine into your blood. Change our lives, make us united, Lord, to spread the love.